Watch, you're on board with him. And one thing he was worried about going into this race was all that dirty air created by 34 cars. But right now, the position he's in, he actually has a small advantage because everybody else has opened the air up in front of him. And he, Whoa, oh, here we go. Trouble contact car, 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 and a huge crash. Oh. Up in turn number oh. two. Oh, multiple cars involved. Oh, my. It looks like Dan Weldon may be involved in it. Eddie, you and I spoke about this this morning on the drive-in. Just this amount of cars, the speed, just the chance for what they call the big one. And what happens in conditions like that? You, when you're even if you're 300 yards behind that, you cannot stop these cars. What the only option you have is to try to avoid it, and it was Im impossible to avoid anything there. And you saw Will Power, his car involved as well. My my my, what a what a mess. That's Townsend Bell that was. I think his car was up on its side there, the 22. 15 there of Jay Howard, an additional entry. Excuse me, is that the 19 to 15? I can't see with the sun shining there. Some of the car is broken. They're showing that as Alex Lloyd, the 19. It is it, the, it's the 15, 15 of Jay Howard. Yes. One of the cars actually flew for about 200 yards in the air. Red flag is out here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway on lap number 12. And from high above, you can see the carnage. We talk about the car going through the air, Eddie, you know that these cars run so low down to the ground. We mentioned before we saw them hitting the ground and sparking that anything underneath the car, underneath the floor, underneath the tub, really just gets the air underneath the car itself and up it will go. We saw J.R. Hildebrand out of his car. There is Dario Franchitti. Somehow he managed to get through the carnage, but... Sure, guys, I mean, there's just nothing I can do. Will Power did not. 10-4. They are going to stop you at pit lane on the right-hand side. They want the drivers to stay in the cars. What Farkidi was alluding to is there's nothing you can do avoiding the debris that's on the track. Well, there is debris everywhere. You can see just how many cars are literally torn apart. And this was the one thing, and there is the 18 of James Jakes. Now, he had a crash early in practice on Friday. That is actually a KV Racing backup car that they put together for him. Now, I don't see much damage on there, but he's out of the cockpit. And look at this from high above. And this was the one thing we were fearing when we saw qualifying and the two championship contenders in the middle of the field a big crash like this early in the race. What happens in accidents like this is that a single mistake by anybody, which might be dirty air, could be anything, multiplies itself so fast that you start accumulating cars. There's no way that you can control what happens. Once you start above. We talked about three or four wide. Watch Sebastian Zavadra, right? Yes. Little contact right there. Now he's trying to go from the low side to the high, uh, from the high side down low to get going for the turn. Oh. And what ends up happening is that he got stuck back up there, turned around, tried to take another move going down, guys, and the backhand started to come around, and that started the chain reaction. He was uncomfortable being on the top lane, and he tried, like you said, there, there's, there's the car. Now, there's two cars that are air to that. This, this puts that's Andy well racing in perspective. This is the horrible accident that everybody has, has always hoped would never occur. And as we said, 15 cars we now know of involved out of the 34 that started on board with Will and give you another perspective of exactly what happened in this 15 car melee. And Eddie, as we know, when you're driving along at these speeds, you're going the length of a football field in less than a second. So if something happens in front of you, you can never have enough reaction time. It, it, it's, it's impossible. You have no time to do anything. What happens maybe is just a small miscommunication between two drivers. Somebody spins and you have 20 cars that arrive on the scene at 220. As you know, we just mentioned it's very difficult to try and avoid it. And as Dario was mentioning, he's just looking forward, trying not to hit the car that's in front of him or subsequent cars that are there. And luckily for him, he got through before everything started to go just upside down. But it's also where you position yourself on the track. He was saying, he just said in his interview, he hated being around cars that he was uncomfortable with. Everybody was doing something. We are getting word that there's Randy our, Bernard. Our thoughts and prayers are with his family today. IndyCar, its drivers and team owners, has decided to end the race. In honor of Dan Weldon, the drivers have decided to do a five-lap salute in his honor. 
It will take place in approximately 10 minutes. Thank you. There will be no one-on-one -on -one interviews or questions. Thank you. All right, we came in late on that, and folks, uh, this is the hardest part of our job, and the last time I had to do this was 2006 with Paul Dana, but we have lost Dan Weldon today here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. A tragic accident on lap number... And here we are, on the track, everybody lined up along pit lane, and there is the field of 19 cars that survived that horrific crash and made it through for the five lap salute to Dan Weldon. When they begin this five laps, folks, we're just gonna sit back and reflect with you.
be a possibility in the So the 2011 IZOD IndyCar Series comes to a close, but not the way that any of us had anticipated nor wanted. A championship has been won, but there's no celebration. A career has ended in one sport to move on to the next, but there is no happiness. And for all of us, it is just an emptiness as we have lost truly a great racer and Dan Weldon. Jamie Little has been standing by at University Medical Center. Three others were transported, J.R. Hildebrand, Pippa Mann, and Will Power. Jamie, can you give us an update from there? I can't hear the boot. Open, Jamie. Go, Jamie, speak. University Medical Center right now in the trauma department, and as you can imagine, there's a lot of emotion here. Dan Weldon's wife, Susie, their two little boys, his three brothers and his sister were all by his side. Team owner Sam Schmidt is here. I've been told that Dan Weldon's parents are at home in England. As for Susie, his wife, a plane is going to North Carolina to bring her family here to Las Vegas. And there's a lot of friends and family surrounding the outside trauma area at this time. All right, Jamie, and, and obviously there's no more information available for J.R. Hildebrand, Pippa Mann, or Will Power as they are still being treated over at University Medical Center. With this, we close out the season. Scott, uh, like I said, not the way we were anticipating at all. Uh, absolutely not, Marty. And I think of Dan Weldon, just a superb person, a very, very fast race driver, somebody that I'm going to certainly miss not only here at the IndyCar track, but some all the time at the kart track, and somebody that all the young drivers looked up to, Eddie. And we'll continue to look up to an amazing human being with so much enthusiasm. And I'm at a total loss. I, I just can't believe what just happened. He always had a smile on his face. In fact, he had actually done three television broadcasts with our Versus crew, the people that do the races when we're not on. And uh, who knows, he may have had a career there. Many people ask me why I always sign off till we meet again. Because goodbye is always so final. Goodbye, Dan Weldon.